What does the term sunnah mean? Indeed, the sunnah has various meanings. In fact, it has three main definitions that the scholars have given as time went by that we will look at each one carefully. For example, one of the scholars called Ibn Mandur, he mentioned and he said, whenever the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, tells us to do something or tells us to refrain from doing something and this specific action is not mentioned in the Quran al Karim, then he would refer to this as a sunnah, whether it is something that is recommended or whether it is something that is obligatory. So here we see the definition of Ibn Mandur, which is those actions that were from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, not specifically mentioned in the Quran al Karim. Another definition which was given by Ash-Shatibi, Ash-Shatibi rahimahullah, he mentions that the sunnah is that which is opposite to al-bid'ah. The sunnah is opposite to al-bid'ah, meaning that the sunnah is the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and the bid'ah is the opposite of the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The bid'ah is everything that goes against the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad in religion. This is referred to as bid'ah. And so therefore, in contrast to this, we would have sunnah, which is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, over the years, as we have mentioned, the scholars have given certain definitions in regards to their field of study. For example, those who are the fuqaha, the jurists, the Islamic jurists, that when they look at the sunnah, when they look at the Islamic evidences, they are thinking about what is halal, what is haram, what is permissible, what is non-permissible, what is mustahab, what is recommended, and what is makruh, what is detested. Now these people define the sunnah as any action that when you do it, you will be rewarded for it. But if you leave it, you will not be punished for leaving this action. For example, the two rakahs before Salat al-Fajr, as we call it, it is a sunnah. Because it is very good if you do it, but if you don't do it, you will not be punished. As for the two rakahs of Salat al-Fajr, the actual two rakahs, if you leave them, you will be punished. But if you do them, then therefore you will have a reward. This is the definition of the fuqaha of the jurists. The second definition of sunnah is the definition of the usuliyun, those people who study usul, usul al-fiqh, which are the bases of Islamic religion. With the usuliyun, with these scholars, what do they look at? They define the sunnah as anything that can be ascribed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his sayings, in his actions, and in his tacit approvals, whatever the Prophet approved. So here we're looking at anything that we can find in the prophetic traditions that will tell us about religion that will show us how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best way. This is the definition of the usuliyun, those who study the basis of Islam. Anything that is ascribed to the Prophet in his saying, qawl, in his fi'l, in his actions and his tacit approvals. This is a second definition of sunnah. Now the third definition of sunnah, which is the broadest definition, is the definition of the muhaddithun. The muhaddithun define a sunnah as anything that is ascribed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in terms of statement, in terms of actions, in terms of tacit approvals, in terms of physical description, and in terms of his conduct. Now this is the broadest definition ever, looking at every single thing related to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, this is called as sunnah. And what we will be studying is how all of these traditions, how all of these texts, how all of these sayings f came down from the Prophet all the way to us. How can we say that the Prophet ﷺ said something with the utmost certainty? We can say this hadith is authentic, this narration is authentic, and this narration is weak. This is what we will be looking at in these series of lectures.